Hey guys, welcome to Bambi TV. So today we're going to be reacting with Farouk. Guys, he's a Muslim guy and I'm a Christian. Guys, today we're going to be reacting to why Islam, Islam is the truth. truth. Okay. Guys, like I had a lot of comments in my previous video, guys. You guys are saying I should read the comments. I should read more, I should read more, I should read more. So today, this was actually your suggestion. So we're going to be checking this out to you guys. So guys, let's get straight into, into this. it. يا نفس إن لم تغفري لا تجزعي Consider this beautiful painting of nature. If I told you that some ink randomly fell onto the paper and made it by chance, how crazy would you think I was? You would instantly deny this and tell me that a painter designed it. <laughs> if something yes. like a painting must have a designer, how about something far more complex like the universe? Just like the painter used yes. different colours and techniques to draw the painting, the universe is also finely tuned to perfection by many fundamentals. If the painter made a small mistake, it would ruin the painting. Similarly, if the fine-tuning of the universe were to change even by the smallest amount, it would no longer exist. <laughs> Just like it is almost impossible to accidentally produce this painting, the odds are almost infinitely more impossible for the universe to accidentally come into existence. Allah challenges our intellect in a profound verse in the Qur'an. He says, Were they created by nothing? Or were they the creators of themselves? Or were they the creators of the heavens and the earth? Rather, they are not certain. Firstly, Allah asks, were they created by nothing? If you think about it, you will quickly realize that this is impossible as you cannot create something from nothing. Now apply this logic to the universe as a whole. Then Allah asks, were they the creators of themselves? For you to create yourself, you have to already exist before you were born to create yourself, which is also impossible. Now apply the same logic to the universe. Since the universe has a beginning, it could not have created itself. Finally, Allah concludes by saying, or were they the creators of the heavens and the earth? Two points. Firstly, the universe existed billions of years before us, and to create something that existed before we were even born is impossible. Secondly, the universe is far, far greater than us. Look at the most impressive human inventions and you'll find that they're nothing compared to even a fly. Human creation is always prone to mistakes and needs teams of maintenance and support in case of breakages or errors. If something as trivial as software needs maintenance, who then is maintaining the universe? From this verse alone, Allah shows us that we could not have come from nothing, we could not have created ourselves, and we cannot create anything as incredible as the universe. So how then do we think we are intelligent enough to deny the existence of a creator? Okay, you might now be thinking, if God created the universe, who created God? Firstly, to say that God has a beginning, or is created, by definition means this being can no longer be a God. But for argument's sake, let's say that the universe was created by something that is created. The next logical question is, what created that thing? And you can ask that question again, and again, an infinite amount of times, and the only way to break this chain is to say that creation was created by an uncreated creator. Secondly, time is a property of the universe. Since the universe has a beginning, we use time to describe what happened from that point. Since Allah is the creator of the universe and time, it does not mean he is restricted by these laws. Hopefully, 
we should arrive at the rational conclusion that the universe is created and maintained by an uncreated creator. Hmm. Generally, there's one person in charge. There's one captain of a ship and one king of a country. Imagine you're driving a car and both you and the person next to you have a steering wheel. Either you agree which way to turn, which shows you are both dependent on each other, or you try and turn left and the other tries turning right and one of you overpowers the other. Now apply this logic to God. If there was more than one God, then these gods cannot be all powerful for the same reasons. And a God that is not all powerful, by definition, cannot be a God. Just imagine if there were two kings running a country. There would be chaos. And amazingly, Allah directly addresses this in the Quran. He says, had there been other gods besides Allah, they both would have been destroyed. In Islam, one of Allah's names is Al-Qahar, the one that overpowers. He doesn't answer to anything or anyone and his will is imposing. The biggest proof that there is only one God is the fact that there is balance in the universe. The laws of physics are consistent, the sky is always blue and gravity is always the same. At this point, you might believe in God, but have a problem following organized religion. I mean, why should you be restricted to a specific way of life, right? But if you really think about it, you already are living your life in a specific way according to the laws of your country. Imagine if your country had no law. Life would be terrifying and everyone would be so lost. This shows us that we need direction. Not only that, but every country has slightly different laws that are constantly changing over time, which also shows us that we as humans cannot decide what is 100% right or wrong. So if we need direction, but cannot decide what is objectively right or wrong, we have a problem. Where do we get the right direction from? Imagine if I gave you a car and you'd never seen one before. Guessing what to put in the fuel tank and what buttons to press is not good enough, but referring to the instruction manual provided by the manufacturer, we will know exactly how to drive the car. In the exact same way, if I want to know why am I here, where am I going, what is my purpose, I must refer to the revelation provided by the creator. How? The answer is the Qur'an. We've all heard about Moses splitting the sea and Jesus being born a miraculous birth, but these miracles are all limited to the time and place in which they happen. The Qur'an, on the other hand, is a special miracle that was given to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and is not limited to time or place. It is a miracle that me and you can pick up, study and experience anywhere, anytime. You can never prove that the splitting of the sea actually took place, but the Qur'an can be proved to be from God. It is a book like no other book, a speech like no other speech, and this can be shown in so many ways. For example, Allah predicted its preservation from the beginning. More than 1,400 years have passed, and the Qur'an remains in its original language completely unchanged. Since Muslims claim the Qur'an is the direct word of God, any changes, even if it was a single letter, would instantly falsify this claim. Allah challenges the reader to look for contradictions if they think the Qur'an is man-made. What we find is that the message is 100% consistent with absolutely no contradictions. Allah also told us that he would make the Qur'an easy to learn. Today, millions of people around the world have the Qur'an stored in memory. Every single generation since the Qur'an was revealed has had memorizers, making it the only book in history to have passed down in both human memory and written form. If all books were to just disappear, the only one that would be back in a day is the Qur'an. Amazingly, 
Allah told us that when people listen to the Quran being recited, they are impacted and you see them start to cry. Thanks to YouTube, we can see this happening with our own eyes. You see people who aren't even Muslim and don't even understand the language breaking down into tears. Even those who recite occasionally cry. What other speech can do this? <laughs> Linguistically speaking, the Quran remains the best Arabic literature to date. Since Arabic is arguably the most eloquent language to ever exist, this makes the Quran the most eloquent speech in the most eloquent language in history. The language of the Quran alone is enough to prove that it could not have come from man. To add to this, the Quran is also jam-packed full of scientific and historical accuracies that were impossible to have been known 14 centuries ago. From the Big Bang, to the expansion of the universe, and to every living thing being made from water. From the two seas that meet but don't mix, to the accurate description of the human embryo. In fact, there are more than 1,000 scientific verses in the book, and not a single one of them can be disproved by established science. For those who are spiritual, it magnifies our spirituality. For those who are intellectual, it challenges our rationality. And the Quran, by far, is the most popular book in the world that is read billions of times every single day, week in, week out, all year round. For these reasons, Muslims can proudly claim that the Quran is self-evident to be entirely from God. If you are still skeptical, pick up a Quran and read it for yourself. Imagine an African child that lived 12 years in poverty and then died of starvation. Now compare this boy to a 70 year old drug dealer that had all the money, all the cars and everything he wanted and then he also died of old age. One lived a short, miserable and difficult life and the other lived in luxury whilst causing harm to society. Now they are simply a collection of bones six feet under the ground. If there was no life after death, how unfair and depressing would that be? The world is full of injustice. People get away with so much evil and innocents get blamed for things they didn't do. Simply just believing in the day of judgment is belief in ultimate justice and accountability. It breathes hope and optimism into every struggling heart. In Islam, the events of the afterlife are described in such graphic detail. No other religion describes it with such conviction and Allah calls the day of judgment in the Quran the ultimate reality. Muslims live to do good in preparation for death. Isn't this a powerful motivator? Throughout history, Allah has sent prophets like Abraham, Moses and Jesus to bring people back to the worship of one God. In Islam, the final prophet sent to humanity was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What's interesting is that the way Muslims have preserved his life is above and beyond any other type of preservation in history. You can't just make up stories about him. Narrations must be supported by the chain of narrators that goes all the way back to his time. The narration and narrators are then tested against strict criteria to verify that the narration can be trusted. Depending on the tests, the narration is then graded with a level of authenticity. Anything you read about the Prophet must have a grade or else it is completely ignored. If the grade is substantially weak, Muslims instantly reject the narration. So to deny that he existed is like denying all history. Saying that, 
His life is so well documented because of the impact he had on his people. We know things like how he used to eat and even the position he used to sleep. It wouldn't be far from accurate to say that we know more about him than any other historical figure. All of this information literally invites us to study his life and make a rational decision to see if he was actually a prophet or not. There are three possibilities for this claim. Either he was lying, or he was mad, or he was telling the truth. Let's break this down. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, received the first revelation from God at the age of 40. This means he lived a completely normal life for 40 years before becoming a prophet. In these 40 years, he built a reputation in his community and they literally nicknamed him the truthful and the trustworthy. He was known to have never told a single lie. Think about it, 40 years of sincerity and then to suddenly come up with a monumental lie like being a prophet doesn't make any logical sense. Later in his life, as people started joining Islam, the leaders were getting more frustrated they offered him anything he wanted just so that he stopped preaching. If there was any time to show that he was lying, this was it. Remember, a liar always lies for a reason, but he rejected. Doesn't this show sincerity? The Prophet was also known to have so much wisdom and his character was impeccable. People used to race to serve him in any way they could. Muslims and non-Muslims turned to him for advice and he never said no to any request. These are not qualities of someone that is mad. Perhaps the biggest proof for me is that the Prophet could not read or write, had no educational background, yet was able to bring forth the Quran that remains the best literature the world has seen even after 1400 years. Logically, this is enough to verify his prophethood. The Quran has literally shaken the world. The Prophet also told many prophecies that made no sense at the time and have only recently materialized. Listen to this. He said that the poor Arabs of the deserts would compete in building tall buildings. He said that interest will spread such that no one can escape the dust of it. He said that power and authority will be given to the wrong people. He said that sexual promiscuity would become rampant and that parents would give birth to their masters. These are only just a few examples from a plethora of authentically graded prophecies. Amazingly, his greatness is globally recognized even by non-Muslims. For example, Michael Hart who wrote the famous book of the top 100 most influential people in history, and he places the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as number one in his list. Other examples include Dr. Keith Moore, George Bernard Shaw, Gandhi, Thomas Carlyle, Lamartine, and the list goes on and on. Can't we logically and rationally say that he was telling the truth? See, the message of Islam is very simple. It is to direct all inward and outward acts of worship to Allah and Allah alone. Worship isn't just to pray. Worship is to obey and to love and to rely upon Allah more than anything or anyone else. It means to break free from society's expectations of you and to fully submit to the expectations of the Creator. In other words, you don't act a certain way or dress a certain way to please certain people, Everything you do is for the sake of Allah. This is true liberation if you ask me. There is no leap of faith in Islam. Allah has given us an intellect, countless signs and a lifetime to search for him. If after this video you now believe that there is only one God and that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was his final prophet, you have found the truth and I would like to personally invite you to Islam. Yeah.
Oh, wow. Ich das schätze. Gott. Wow. <lacht> I don't even know what to say, but like. Wow. Okay, let me go first. I think this, this, this opens a lot. Uh, like, yes. I was listening to watch this video. It's, it's, um, answers a lot of questions about Islam. What the whole concept of Islam is about. It answers the whole questions that have been put to me personally by Christians. And I hope, hopefully, you guys watch this video and you guys learn a lot from it. So, let I have one puzzle. Like, I'm puzzled. I have I have some questions in my head that I need to make research on personally. Okay. So, guys, to we'll end this year, guys, I'm gonna come back with like a part two or something. But the next time I'm making a Muslim video, I have that questions and maybe have some questions in mind. But this this was amazing. Like Prophet Muhammad right. was an amazing person. Yes. He never yes. took your life for forty years. Like. That was I mean, huge. That is a huge one, guys. It's a huge one. He was a role model. He, me personally, I um, look up Prophet Muhammad's lifestyle to see his way of life and try to incorporate it into my own life. Huh. You know, of course, it can't be perfect, but then you can just try. Guys, please just like, share, subscribe to my channel. We'll see you next time, guys. Good.